Hello everyone, I'm Avishi Jain and I welcome you all to my podcast. And today we have a very special guest with us. Guess who? Mr. Deepak Goyal, who is the co-founder of Fuse Fair ICP India Hub. Sir is an alumni of IIT Delhi and he also worked in Switzerland for about a year before he returned back to India to start his own education venture. Sir is a serial entrepreneur who has explored various domains like e-commerce, uh, ed tech, affiliate marketing, blockchain, just to name a few. After scaling his uh, venture to a multi-million dollar exit, Sir has moved on uh, his next venture, Cruise Fair, to bring India to, to a sphere of uh, the global blockchain map. And it's taking India to the uh, totally revo- revolutionized tech. So, um, without, a, uh, without further ado, let's move on to the further chit chat with us. Hello, sir. Um, to connect with you. Sir, uh, can you please give a brief uh, description of your journey so far? Like my uh, journey, I kind of started with tech way back in 2004 when I entered IIT. And post that, uh, like, I was uh, I've been a serial entrepreneur. And recently, after making a good exit, I deep dived into blockchain when this opportunity with ICP came up. And the mission is now to basically at least incubate 100 plus startups in the next six months. So that we can exactly put India on the blockchain map of the world. So uh, I was a bit curious, and even my the audience might be even thinking about that. What was the reason behind why you moved on to blockchain, and you got convinced to you know uh, try it out? Look, uh, the reason I kind of first of all came back to India was my parents because uh, their health was not in such a situation that I could help them at that at that time. And then with Web2, the kind of opportunity that was there in 2010, I somehow missed the boat because I was just because conditions or circumstances was not right for me. With Web3, I personally feel the ethos of the space are more aligned with us because it is all about community play, which we Indians can understand better. And also the stage is also at a very nascent level. So to penetrate into this space and to make a significant dent is possible. So this is the reason why I kind of deep dive into it. The audience might also be wondering that is there a difference between Web2 and Web3? So we are constantly hearing about this uh, switch to Web3. So is there a specific reason why we should switch over to Web3? And can you uh, make out the difference between Web2 and Web3? From majority of the end users, the difference might not be even visible because end of the day, they are just using the applications. But the people who understand the importance of ownership for them, Web3 makes a lot of sense. Web2 is all about aggregation, where a handful of people control the entire ecosystem. Whereas Web3 is all about community play, where the power, the ownership is given back to the community. So community decides what is right and what is wrong for someone. So this is the fundamental difference between Web2 and Web3. Uh, so moving on to particularly to Web3 domain, we have heard about, uh, and I can say there is a myth that Web3 revolves around cryptocurrency. So, what are cryptocurrencies and how are they different from the traditional currencies which we have? And if they are good enough, then uh, what are the specific reasons as to why a person should consider cryptocurrency over the usually uh, traditional ones? So, cryptocurrency is just one small application of Web3. What exactly happened when 2008 recession happened, then a lot of people thought that since every single data about finance is there in the digital space, US and the Canada and the Western world were already using plastic money. So they could have easily seen recession coming, but still recession happened. That means the centralized agencies, the banking system is somehow being corrupted to a level where they can trigger things like recession. So that is where the best minds in the world felt there's a need to have a decentralized finance system, which can be built on a trustless technology, where we don't even have to trust anybody and still the entire ecosystem works flawlessly. So this is how this first application of Web3 happened, which is known as cryptocurrency. So it's a very small part of the entire thing. So moving on to particularly in uh, the depth of blockchain, uh, for instance, if you take a new student or a beginner, you can consider me as one. So if I am to learn blockchain, how to start with it so that uh, my learning could reach a particular phase and what are the particular tech stacks I should uh, be focusing on at the very start of 
Okay. Well, to begin with, just to understand the echoes, the understanding of the space, one should start following Twitter. Twitter, like but now it is called X. So there are a lot of founders, a lot of uh, influencers, people who are deep into blockchain, who actually keep a lot of Ask Me Anything sessions known as AMA sessions. So you can join the Twitter spaces and then can follow them, can attend these AMAs, can ask questions. After 10 to 15 AMAs, you will be in a level where you will be able to understand the technology. From a tech stack point of view, if you talk about the front end, front end can be anything similar to what Web2 is. At the back end, uh, the two different, uh, I would say, languages which you should have expertise in are Rust and JavaScript. Rust still is, has a little learning curve, so you can skip that also. With JavaScript, still you will be able to cover the majority of the blockchain. So if you know JavaScript, you can easily handle the back end of blockchain technology, which is the most important part. So, Kant, uh, so as you know that uh, sir is the co-founder of ICT Media Hub. So, uh, what does that actually works on? The, uh, can you explain a little bit what it, what's it all about? So, ICP basically is uh, all about decentralized world internet. So, uh, today, even the blockchains like Ethereum, the computation cost, on-chain computation cost is so heavy that the majority of their work happens on AWS on Web2 environments. Even if they're using secondary L2 blockchains like Polygon, it somehow compromises the security. This is where ICP had envisioned this good 10 years back that the entire internet needs to be decentralized. So from the infrastructure level, if you talk about the protocols, servers, and then the top-end applications, everything in ICP is totally decentralized and also optimized. Like if you end up spending $350 million for 1 GB data for one year in Ethereum, that would come down to just $5 with ICP. So they are decentralizing the entire world in uh, infrastructure, internet infrastructure, and also bringing down the cost to that level where it becomes more sustainable. And uh, the India hub is among the 24 hubs which exist for ICP, and we're doing a lot of evangelization activities, but the primary goal is to at least incubate 100 startups in the next six months. Uh, moving on to uh, particular uh, is there any use case or any part of your project which we can, uh, which you can actually explain to us for a better understanding of how blockchain works now, and which you might have even used in your ICP, sir? With ICP? Uh, any uh, blockchain technology? At the global level, ICP now has almost uh, a clone of every Web2 application. So we have uh, decentralized Instagram and ICP, these almost applications like decentralized YouTube, uh, even decentralized hot or not is there. So a lot of such applications are already there. Then the technologies uh, which can help us build immersive play known as metaverses. So there are beautiful metaverses already being built on ICP infrastructure ecosystem. And along with that, a lot of DeFi applications are also existing. And since the on-chain computation in, IA, in ICP is pretty affordable and sustainable, we are also seeing a lot of AI based solutions coming into the picture. So, though it's a recent addition, but in the next couple of months, you will see a lot of brilliant AI driven applications getting built on ICP. Uh, so, moving on to that only, if we are considering the topic of ICP right now, were there any hurdles which you faced? Because when a person is moving on from Web2 to Web3, so were there any hurdles which you faced in a very recent startup which you had? So, any hurdles? using blockchain or any other stuff which you could add? And the biggest hurdle is uh, finding the good uh, developers. There's a huge dearth of talent as far as uh, Web3 is concerned. So even if uh, you talk about three years of development experience in blockchain, attracting a salary of one crore Indian rupees sitting at home is also possible. But even with these handsome salaries, convincing people to deep dive into the space is a bit difficult. So I think uh, the biggest challenge that we have faced while uh, doing all the activation part in the Indian ecosystem is that very few people have shown interest to be the developers in this space, even though it is much, much more rewarding than the current Web2 space. So at one place where the people are getting fired in Web2, on the contrary, there is a huge dearth of talent in Web3. This is the biggest concern that we have faced. But we are optimistic that sooner or later this thing is going to change. Which is, if a beginner is there, first as you can see there are plenty of 
plethora of uh, resources are there. You can talk about open source projects. So, is there a reason why we should prefer the paid courses? And if they are, then why should we prefer them? What are they, uh, you know, offering us, which the open source projects or the free uh, knowledge which we are getting? Is uh, in boxing, things work completely differently. Majority of chains have learned to earn money. In fact, they pay you for doing the course. So if you are interested in blockchain, reach out to different blockchains, like the blockchain you want to work with and ask for these courses. They will be more than happy to actually incentivize you to learn something. Just if you have to understand one thing, since the developer cost is very high and finding good talent is a huge problem in blockchain, that's why they incentivize the users to learn something about blockchain. So, so should we prefer the paid courses, like we are paying to get to study them. That, I, I don't think so in blockchain that is required at all because on the contrary sign up with the native course of the blockchain and in fact avail the opportunity of something earning through that also. Mm -hmm. So one domain which is incentivizing you to become a developer doesn't make any sense to pay to become a developer. Mm -hmm. It's it's counterproductive as well as space is concerned. So the last question for you uh, is can you give a piece of advice to those tech enthusiasts out there who want to excel and succeed in this tech industry? I think one thing that I always say that AI has been basically driven by a beautiful application called ChatGPT. It kind of caught everyone's imagination and in the last one year things have gone to a completely insanity level. The influencers, the entire ecosystem is talking about AI a lot. But the opportunities are now getting dried up there because already a lot of stuff has happened. Whereas Web3 is still in its infancy phase. Significant products at the world level hasn't come up, but they will sooner or later come. So this is the time to dive into this space and also the opportunity to create the next Microsoft, Googles and Facebooks of the world. So anybody who really wants to make it big, I think Web3 is the space to dive into. Because still it is, it is waiting for its big moments to come. So any last sentence which you would like to uh, say to our audience? I think uh, be the part of the hackathons. We are launching the hackathon soon, in a week's time. The tagline is "Enter as a vision and exit as a venture." So this is what we will expect. Explore all the opportunities given by the new blockchains, it's similar to what Google and Microsoft did 10, 15 years back. But now those opportunities have dried up, but the Web3 opportunities have just opened up. So make the best use of it. Thank you so much guys for being a patient audience and thank you sir for gracing us with your presence and I hope we, could, uh, we can collaborate further on that. Thanks for having me.